Up until this point, everything we've seen of Sekiro Shadows Die Twice has looked like this. Well, except for the spaghetti-filled chicken. But it's looked like this snowy Sengoku period Japanese village, and that's why today I want to take you on a tour of brand new environments, highlighting the variety that this game has, and asking the important question, do you think there will be enough diversity in environments and in enemies in this game set in a more realistic location than any from software title before it. What's going on guys and girls? It's Ghost Robo and welcome to the temple where we take on warrior monks trying to ruin our day high above crashing down within these forests. These dudes are flinging their feet and I had so much fun with Sekiro. Big thanks to Activision for flying me in New York City so I could check out a bunch of the game and I'll be honest I was nervous because everything we've seen of Sekiro has been within that snowy Ashina area and it's a cool looking area and I'm all for it being more based in reality but I love me some variety in fact I love the mystical elements of Dark Souls and Bloodborne a lot and so I wanted there to be some of that here now, given the extreme verticality of Sekiro, even the most basic environments can become very intriguing and engaging, but I was happy to see that even within the first few hours of the game, there was quite a bit of color palette difference, environment difference, and enemy difference. Now, it kind of seems like the enemies are more similar than before, but maybe that is just a, a weird frame of mind given that you don't really change weaponry. Because if I think back to Dark Souls, it's like, okay, this guy was like kind of like an armored knight, this guy was kind of like an undead dude, this guy was kind of another undead dude, this guy was a, another knight, and here we have like, this guy's kind of like a samurai, and this guy's kind of like a armored samurai, and this guy's kind of like a basic samurai, and I'm sure the variety will continue to ebb and flow as the game progresses, and they definitely do wild and weird things as you move through the levels, like this one right here all sorts of insane moves that I could barely keep up with. So fear not, there are a lot of differences, not to mention a gigantic serpent. And I hope there are plenty more cat and mouse beasts. I made a video on that if you want to see. Now here is a beautiful area. This is the Harada Estate, I believe. And the bamboo lined or tree lined uh, pathways, I think are gorgeous. Now I didn't have a whole lot of time to explore here. So I just rushed my way through gameplay is not going to be premiere, uh, but the visuals absolutely are. In the rain, this to me was the most striking environment, and I loved exploring. In fact, it had a very Bloodborne-esque feel to me in this specific area. Although I will note that some of the scenarios they've set up, and maybe it's because of how they need to establish the levels given that you can traverse them with so much freedom, but some of them start to seem a little samey, and I'll pose the question to you. You're gonna see two sequences coming up. Are they too similar? Are you worried about overall variety in Sekiro? These are just the first few hours, so in theory it should continue to get more and more crazy. But yeah, sound off on your take on variety in the comments down below. So I paired these sequences together because you can see how in Harada we creep through purple flowers, and in Ashina, we creep through snowy crops, still utilizing our effective stealth to absolutely decimate our opponents. And now we're going to experience one of the most gorgeous scenes that I saw. Here is where From Software uses their trademark visual storytelling. They establish lore and plot through what you see, not what you hear. Although I will say that Sekiro utilizes more dialogue probably than any From Software game before it. You can even listen in to enemies and hear what they're thinking or what they're talking about. Uh, or you can be spoken to by a giant spear and one hit killed by that wonderful boss there. Absolutely beautiful. These guys, not so beautiful, but it's time now to showcase some indoor environments. A lot of stinky crickets as we enter a very peaceful temple where these monks are trying to maintain serenity and also maintain apparently a giant bug farm which is really gross and so as punishment i am going to absolutely eviscerate their existence and we will do it with a little respect a slow creep and a dastardly kill followed up by a blood cloud to make matters even worse the vistas in sekiro 
are quite stunning, and they give off the appearance that you can reach everything you can see. I don't think that's fully the case, but it sure looks like it. And I love when video games establish their world off in the distance, and then you eventually get there. So I really do hope that Sekiro continues to pack on the variety. And here we're going to see some scenes from your base of operations, the hub world. And I think they're very interesting because, one, they provide more visual flair, but also the specific shots I've chosen highlight the early areas of the game. Some of these trees and some of the areas within the hub are, I feel, representative of Ashina and of the Harada Estate and of the temple. You can see the bamboo that, I think, would be linked to Harada, and you can see the snow that obviously is linked to Ashina, and even some of the trees are reminiscent uh, of the temple that we just spent time in. So my question is, will the hub eventually evolve? Will it change? Is the hub indicative of the different environments, or are there plenty more beyond what you see? And that just helps highlight the first bite of this delicious Sekiro cookie. So I like where things are headed, but I do feel that some of the early areas were a little too samey. I would have liked to see more indoor-outdoor transitions and more environmental complexity beyond the verticality. So hopefully they can pack that in as the game progresses. Nonetheless, the more and more I play of the game, the more and more it does feel like the true sequel to Dark Souls and Bloodborne. So many elements are still there. The intensity, the intrigue, the terror when you are getting so far and yet know you are one bad move away from blowing it all to bits and losing almost everything. There may not be souls in this game, but it sure does share the soul of its predecessors and I cannot wait to see what the final version ends up being like. And hopefully there are crazy creatures crazy dudes and beautiful vistas for us to explore together thank you so much for watching the video if you enjoyed definitely hit that thumbs up button have a fantastic day everybody and until next time drink so much chocolate thanks again and we'll see you all later